Turning this morning to 2 Thessalonians, please. Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians, and we're in chapter number 3, please. 2 Thessalonians, chapter number 3. Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians. In chapter number 3, in verse number 1, Paul writes, Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified, even as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from all evil. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you, that ye both do and will do the things which we command you. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tradition which he received of us. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us. For we behaved not ourselves disorderly among you, neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you, not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of his own precious truth. The text that the Lord wants to speak to us through this morning let me tell you from the word go, it's a most blessed text, and it's a beautiful text. And it's a text this morning that you'll find a blessing if you're in trouble. You know, God's people can find themselves in trouble. Job chapter 14 and verse number 1, we read, Man is man that is born of a woman is a few years and full of trouble. And maybe this morning there's a brother and there's a sister and you're in trouble in some way. Well, this text is going to be an encouragement for you. Or perhaps this morning there's someone here and you're not in trouble, but you're fearful. And mind you, some of God's people can be fearful at times. Maybe there's someone here and, and you're afraid of something. And this morning finds you faithful, fearful. You remember in Mark's gospel, chapter number 4, you remember the disciples on this, in the boat that day when the Lord Jesus was there with them. And you remember how the storm of wind came and the waves came. And this storm arose. And the disciples thought they were going to perish. And you know, they were so fearful on that sea and that storm that they even cried out to the Lord Jesus in the midst of their fears and says, Master, carest not thou that we perish? And after the Lord Jesus calmed the wind and calmed the sea, he turned round to the disciples and said, Why are ye so fearful? And I wonder this morning, are you fearful over something? Well, let me tell you, this is going to be a blessed text for those of you who are fearful. Maybe it's not this morning that you're in trouble or you're in, that you're fearful. Maybe 
Maybe this morning you're doubtful, and this morning you've come to this meeting, and your heart and your mind's filled with doubts. You remember Thomas, don't you? You remember the disciples gathering together, and they came to Thomas and said, Thomas, we, we've, we've saw the Lord. And Thomas said to the disciples, Lest I see the print of the nails in his hands, and, and put my fingers into those prints, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And you know, God's people can become doubtful at times. And maybe there's a brother here this morning, and you're doubtful. You've become doubtful. Maybe, sister, you've become fearful. Or maybe there's somebody this morning, and you're in trouble. Well, the text that the Lord wants to speak to us through is a blessed text, a text of, that's going to bring great encouragement. You see, when Paul was writing this second epistle, he was writing to believers who were in trouble. He was writing to believers who had become fearful. He was writing to believers who had become doubtful because false teachers had crept into this church. And in the second chapter in verse number 3, he said, "'Let no man deceive you by any means.'" They were coming in, and they were preaching different from what Paul the apostle preached. And these disciples became troubled, and they became fearful, and they became doubtful. They thought the day of the Lord had come. They thought they were in the tribulation because of the great persecution that was going all around them. And what these believers needed in Thessalonica that's what we need this morning. Do you know what they needed and what we needed? They needed a sound word of encouragement. And that's what we all need at times, don't we? We all need a sound word of encouragement, not some old wishy-washy thing that only sticks for now and then. We need a wee sound word of encouragement, and the Lord has given me that this morning through this text. Do you know what Paul the Apostle told these believers who were troubled, who were fearful, who were doubtful? He had this to say to them, and this is my text. 2 Thessalonians 3, verse number 3. Here's my text. The Lord is faithful. Isn't that a lovely text this morning? The Lord is faithful. Do you know what my text doesn't say? My text doesn't say that the Lord is unfaithful. Never a once in Holy Scripture will you find the Lord unfaithful. And my text this morning does not say that the Lord is forgetful. We're all forgetful at times, and there's no more person can get more forgetful than myself. But the Lord's not forgetful, because it does say in Hebrews 6 and 10 that He's not unrighteous to forget. No, no. Here's the text this morning. The Lord is faithful. Do you believe that? The Lord is faithful faithful. And the Lord, first of all, wants to show you and to remind you this morning. You know, we all need reminded of great truths this morning. And here's the first thing the Lord wants to say to us. The Lord is faithful in His person. The Lord is faithful in his person. When Paul was writing to Timothy, he said this, If we believe not yet, yet he abideth faithful. 
You know, the Lord is faithful in his person this morning. Malachi chapter 3 and verse number 6, he himself said, I am the Lord. I change not. He's the unchangeable God. He's faithful. The Lord is faithful in his person. Let me take a wee moment just to look at the person. Let's look at the person of the Lord this morning. I'll tell you something. He is faithful. The Lord is faithful in this person as far as his mercy is concerned. You know, child of God, this morning, the Lord is faithful as far as him being a God of mercy. Do you remember what we read in Deuteronomy 4, verse 31? The Lord thy God is a merciful God. I'll tell you, he proved that when the woman was taken in adultery. And the Pharisees came to the Lord Jesus, and they said, The law said that you should be stoned. And the Lord Jesus just looked at her, and he had mercy and compassion upon her. He's a merciful Lord this morning. And let's face it this morning, child of God, where would you be? Where would I be? Where would any of us be if it hadn't have been for the mercy of the Lord? And thank God this morning He is faithful. The Lord is faithful in His person as far as His mercy is concerned. I think Peter would have to say the Lord is faithful in His mercy as far as His mercy is concerned. Do you remember Peter one day? He denied the Lord three times. Many a time Peter made a blunder, but yet, yet he proved that the Lord is faithful in his person as far as his mercy was concerned. Maybe there's someone here, and you have failed the Lord in recent days, and perhaps there's someone here this morning, and you're beating yourself up because you made a blunder. Well, let me tell you, the Lord is faithful in His person as far as His mercy is concerned. You know, when I look at the Lord this morning, I have to say this, and, and the Lord wants to remind your heart this morning is, the Lord is faithful in His person as far not only as His mercy is concerned, but His judgment is concerned. When we think of this world of ours, and we think of this nation of ours, and we think of the sin and the vile abominations that's going on, and the laws that are being passed, and a day where, where sin is being glorified and promoted rather than punished, we we'll wonder, where is God? Why is God allowing this to happen? You remember this. God is faithful in this person. He won't let it go unjudged because he's a God of judgment. In 2 Peter chapter number, in chapter number 3, verse number 10, we read, Someday will come and when the very heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall bur pass, burn with melt with fervent heat, the earth also and all the works therein shall be burned up. Listen, I can tell you there's a day coming when God is going to judge this world. And this world needs to know, and our leaders need to know, and our governments need to know that God's judgment is coming. And one day this earth, this whole earth, the Bible teaches, is going to melt with fervent heat, and the earth and all that is within will be burned up. And we're going to get into that in our Bible class some night. God is faithful. The Lord is faithful, yes, in His person, as far as His mercy is concerned. The Lord is faithful in His person, as far as His judgment is concerned. Ah, the Lord is faithful in His person, as far as His love is concerned. And if you're here this morning not a Christian, let me tell you how much He loves you. He went to that old rugged cross, to there to be crucified, to be crucified there for you, and to suffer that awful agony of Calvary's cross. 
and there to suffer and to bleed and to die in your guilty room instead because your sin this morning is keeping you out of heaven. And your sin separates you from God. But the Lord loves you too much this morning. He wants you to come to Him and trust Him to be your Savior because He has the power tonight to forgive you, this morning to forgive you of your sin, and He wants to cleanse you and make you His. Oh, the Lord is faithful in His person. You know, here's another thought the Lord wants to leave you with this morning. The Lord is faithful in His in his person, but the Lord is faithful in his promises. Do you know every promise in the Bible carries the weight of God's integrity? The Lord is faithful in his promises. You see, we're living in a day now where you can believe nobody or believe nothing. I was sitting in the hospital yesterday with my mother, and I says, Mommy, isn't it true there was a day in our wee land, in our wee province, where a man's word was his bond? Ah, she says, it, there was, there was, but not now, she says, not now. And that's true. You know, people think today nothing of making promises and breaking them again. It happens every day, doesn't it? Boys make promises with girls only to break them. Girls make promises with boys only to break them. Husbands break promises, makes, makes promises with wives, then breaks them. Wives make promises with husbands and then breaks them. I and parents make promises with children and breaks them. And children make promises with parents and breaks them. You know, in a day in which we live where you can trust nobody, the Lord is faithful in His promises. You know, the Bible says, for all the promises of God in Him are yea and amen. You know what the Bible tells us in two places, not just the one place, but two places? Titus chapter 1, verse 2. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18. Do you know what it says? It's impossible for God to lie. The Lord is faithful in His promises. You know, the Lord is faithful this morning in His promises. And that proves me every promise that the Lord makes. It's true. You remember how he spoke to Abraham one day, and so it said to Abraham in Genesis 18, told Abraham that by this time next year, Sarah will bear a son. And both of them were well beyond childbearing, but the Lord made them a promise. You know, the Lord makes promises. Promises to fulfill, not promises to fail. You ask Abraham this morning, is the Lord faithful in his promises? He would say, oh, the Lord is faithful in his promises. Do you remember that day when the angel came to Mary, and the angel said to Mary, Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shalt bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus, and he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give him the throne of his father David. And you know, friend, that was a promise that was beyond her wildest dreams, because she turned round and said to him, how shall this thing be, saying, I know not a man? You know, friend, what Mary does? Mary proves to all of us that the Lord is faithful in His promises. 
I wonder this morning, dear child of God, do you realize this morning how faithful the Lord is? Maybe this morning you're here and you've come with a heart and a head that's heavy, with fears and troubles and doubts. And the Lord wants to speak into that troubled heart, and He wants to speak into that fearful mind, and He wants you to listen to this text this morning. The Lord is faithful. He's faithful in His promises. An old saint of God many years ago was dying in hospital. A man who knew the Scriptures inside out and could have quoted you the Bible from cover to cover. Give him any verse, he could have quoted it there and then, knew where it was. But one day his pastor went in to visit him, and this old saint of God was very agitated and very frustrated. And the pastor pulled up the chair and says to him, What's wrong? He says, There's something badly wrong, he said. All my life, I knew the promises of God, and I read them over and over, and I ministered to my own mind in difficult times. But now, he says, but now I can't remember one of them. And I'm afraid. And the wise pastor just leaned over and said this to him. He says, maybe you don't remember any of the promises of God, but the Lord remembers every one that He has made. You know, child of God, the Lord remembers every promise that He has made. And there's one promise today He will not fail, and that's the promise that He made in John 14 and 3, where He says, I will come again, and the Lord will not fail in that promise. The Lord is faithful in His person. The Lord is faithful in His promises. Let me say this, the Lord is faithful in His provisions. Oh, the Lord is faithful in His provisions. Do you remember the psalmist? He was an old man when he was writing Psalm 37. And he penned this in verse 25 as a testimony. He says, I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. You see, the Lord is faithful in His person. The Lord is faithful in His promises. The Lord is faithful in His provision. Maybe this morning, child of God, you're in great need of something. I don't know what it is. And perhaps it's none of my business as to what that is, but you're in great need for something. And you don't know how that need's going to be met. And you're fearful because you don't know how it's going to take place. Let me say something this morning to your heart and let God get this into your heart and mind. The Lord is faithful in His provisions because my God shall supply your needs according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You see, the Lord is faithful. Do you remember Elijah by the brook Cherith? Morning by morning, evening and evening, Elijah proved that the Lord is faithful when he sent the ravens to feed him bread and flesh in the morning, bread and flesh in the evening. You know, child of God, this morning, listen, the Lord is able to meet your need, whatever that need is. That need may be beyond your reach. Ah, but listen, God can provide for you beyond your reach. 
When David Brainerd, who was a missionary to the Indians, came into a real rainstorm in the forest one day, got himself into a hollow log, and that's where he was, and he had no food. Everything was spent. And he was there for three long days, and he prayed, Oh, God, I need food. And you're the God that is able to do it. And the next morning there came a wee squirrel with a nut in its mouth and kept dropping it at the, at the door, where, at the place where the, where the log was, where Brainerd was. And every time he went up the tree, he would drop the nut. And Brainerd ate those nuts, and that's how God sustained him. You see, the Lord is faithful, friends, in His provision. You know, maybe this morning you're crying out and you're in a desperate place for something. Listen to what the Lord wants to say to you. The Lord is faithful in His provisions. My God will supply all your need. Listen, dear, whatever that need is this morning, the Lord is able to provide it. And whatever that need is, brother, listen, the Lord is faithful in that providing that need for you. The Lord is faithful in His person. The Lord is faithful this morning in His promises. The Lord is faithful in His provisions. Remember, the Lord is faithful in His protection. Proverbs 18, verse 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and is safe. You see, the Lord is faithful in His protection. You don't know, child of God, nor I don't know, how many times the Lord has been faithful in His protection that we know nothing about. You know, child of God, dear knows what the Lord has protected us from in days gone by. In Nahum chapter 1, verse number 7, we read, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And I've shared this story with you before. I'll share it with you again. The night my father, the 12th night of July, 1986, when my father was shot and injured by the provisional IRA, not only did they shoot him, they left a bomb sitting in a bin beside where, they, where he was shot, and, and that was planted there to blow up all the, the security forces that was, that was to come that evening up at Rahaki House. And you know, child of God, we were there that night. We were called out to the scene, and that bomb should have exploded while we were there. But it didn't. And yes, the man who set the bomb might have put the battery in the wrong road. That's why it didn't go off. But listen, it was the Lord who had His hand on us. It was the Lord. It wasn't luck that a lot of people talked about. The Lord is faithful in His protection when dangerous times come. Ah, the Lord is faithful. I love the picture, you know, of the farmyard hen. And I remember many a time at Granny's. And I remember one day there came a clap of thunder, and I run like the billy -o, but I remember this. I was afraid of thunder. Still, I'm afraid of thunder, but I remember this day that out in the farmyard, out there outside the hen house, there was a hen, and she, man, she shot up the wings, and she cackled. I didn't know whether she was cackling or clacking her. Clacking, she clacks when, when she lays. I think it's she cackled. Or she made some strange sound. And boys, there was about half a dozen wee yellow goslings, wee chicks, run under her. And she got down on top of them, and she got the wings, and she got her wee bum, and she just got down on them. And mom, there was the safest houses. Ah, friend, you know, that's how the Lord pictures Himself with you and me, you know. It says, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings thou shalt trust. I'll tell you, child of God, listen to me this morning. Listen to the Lord, never you mind. Listen to me. Do you see you and me? You and me are better protected than the American president. Donald Trump's running about with boys following him everywhere with bulletproof vests and revolvers. We don't need a bulletproof vest or revolver. 
the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Why? The Lord is faithful in his protection. Oh, friend, get this. Underline that this morning. Underline it. We all need to underline it. The Lord is faithful. He's faithful in his person. The Lord is faithful in his promises. The Lord is faithful in his provision. The Lord is faithful in his protection. The Lord is faithful in his purposes. Oh, the Lord is faithful in his purposes. Romans 8, 20, For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, for them who are called according to his purpose. And maybe there's some child of God, and this is where the Lord wants to address you. There's things that has come into your life, and they're not working out the way that you have wanted it. You've prayed for something, but nothing's happening. It seems if God is closing his ears, The Lord is faithful in His purposes, even when His purposes run against our prayers. The Lord is faithful. There are things that I don't know There are answers we'll never receive as to why things are allowed to happen or not allowed to happen. And the Lord is faithful even when we cannot see how. No wonder, child of God, are you here And things haven't worked out the way you wanted it. You remember this this morning, the Lord is faithful. When we don't know why the Lord is faithful, there are secrets that belong to God and their better remaining with God. But here's what the Lord wants you to take to heart this morning. The Lord is faithful. Even when life hurts, the Lord is faithful. The Lord is faithful in His person, The Lord is faithful in His promises. The Lord is faithful in His provisions. The Lord is faithful in His protection. Child of God, the Lord is faithful in His purposes. I could go on and on with half a dozen more, but the Lord didn't let me. The Lord told me to stop there. You know, life for all of us has many ups, and boys, it has many downs, maybe more downs than ups. And there are many different changing scenes in life. You change, I change, life changes. But one truth never changes. And that is the Lord is faithful. And may God bless that word to your heart and to your soul, and to your mind, for his name's sake. Amen.